are you guys how are you it's good to see you Jacqueline Jacks from ABA live radio so a little bit later today I'm gonna to be doing another music stream reviewing some new tracks and rearranging our playlist so if you want to see the behind the scenes of what goes on um, on our radio show then certainly tune in for the live stream and follow this channel but here's a question for you guys and something that I think a lot of you want to know the answer to because I get a lot of these messages. One of it, one of the questions that gets posed to me so much is the real reason why some musicians get tens of thousands of views and super fans and streams and, and just do so, so well, yet other fans or other musicians just don't. You know, and it has nothing really to do, I mean, it does have a lot to do with quality, right? But say you take two musicians, and so often you see this, you see a musician that maybe is producing good music, it's good quality, they have like a lot of great content out there, and they're getting like so much attention, they're getting, they're commanding so much of the share, right? And everybody's excited, they've got super fans, they're really just killing it out there. And yet you have other musicians that just are getting no attention at all and they're just not making it and they can't figure out why. I'm going to talk about this in that in this video today. And I think it's really really going to help you to understand what you need to do moving forward and maybe what you're not doing yet that you could be doing. And um you know that's that's my entire goal for right now is just to do that. Now at the end of the video so right now first we're going to go through the real reason some musicians get tens of thousands of fans and views and super fan excitement and everything they want, right? They're earning money, they're doing this full time. Then I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can use this information to build your own audience and do it for yourself. And then at the end of the video, so you wanna stick around, I'm gonna be talking about how you can earn a full-time living and income off of that audience that you build. So we've got how to, who's doing it, and the purpose, and, and also how to make it a full-time career. I think this is gonna be an amazing video. I am putting it all in one video because I figured why do you have to go to like so many videos to figure this all out? Why not just put it in one? We'll have a chat. And if there's any questions, leave it in the comments below and I will address those questions in another video for you so that we can just keep diving a little bit deeper so that I know what it is you can't do or what you're not understanding. And that way I can help because I know I've got all the answers, but it's not always that I know exactly what question you guys want answered, but I do know this. This is one of those questions that's very, very good, and I know that you need it. All right, so let's dive in. I've got my notes because <laughs> I don't want to forget anything. So I spent some time uh, this morning over coffee. Got my coffee here. Just had another cup, and I was thinking about this. I was thinking about why does one musician get thousands of excitable fans and they they just do so well and everything seems to work out for them and then others of equal even better quality get zero i mean like literally there are four million four million musicians out there they get zero plays on spotify they can't even get one well maybe they get one play because they're listening to their own music but literally they get no plays and that's four million musicians so we see this like less than one percent stand out and then you have a percentage that do okay, right? And then you get a percentage that just do nothing. And the show here we have at AVA Live Radio features musicians no matter what level they're at. We don't qualify a musician based on the amount of social media followers and engagement they have just because it's not fair. It doesn't, I don't want to qualify a musician based on the fact if they can run a social media page or create good content or do any of the things I'm going to tell you to do in, in this video. But we make sure we feature musicians because of their skills and their talent. And we want to make sure that that is first and foremost. But that's not always the case with everyone. I mean, most of the music blogs, most of the press teams, anybody that's worth working with won't do that. They literally want to see proof of concept and proof of concept to me comes in the form of man, 
other people. <laughs> and I know as a musician, you're not going to like that. But let's face it, if nobody wants to listen to your music and you have knocked your head against the wall, getting it out there, there's a reason, there's a piece that you're missing. And this is probably going to be the piece in this video. This is going to be the one thing that you are missing and that you are entirely missing the boat. And I don't want to see you guys waste your time. You know, not all of you can come and work with us here at the AVA Live Radio team. Not all of you guys have the ability to put all of the right ducks in a row and hire for everything you want to do. Hey, how are you guys doing? But I do know this. I know that everybody that is a musician really wants to be considered credible and everybody really wants that, that verification. Right. And a lot of you signed really bogus label deals because you just felt like you needed some kind of a verification that you had value. But the value you are offering is probably not in a way you think that you should. And let's talk about that. All right. So first, why do some musicians get it? All right. We have to talk about value if we're going to talk about this, because the value in the content can't just be the music. Just bear with me. The platforms that you're trying to conquer, right? The platforms that you're trying really, really, really badly to capture an audience on. And the, these same platforms that people judge your credibility based on, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. If you did really well on those, you would have credibility and you would keep doing well on them, right? So, <laughs> makes so much sense. <laughs> yes, I know, right? I, I, I'm with you there. I totally, Ryan says, this makes so much sense. I like your most stubborn, I'm like your most stubborn, hard-headed client, but you're 100% correct. <laughs> so the value, let's talk about value a little in depth. Because uh, you hear this concept a lot, and I, and I believe we're missing the mark as educators if we don't really specifically tell you what value is. Now, value, yes, a great quality song is value. It's valuable. But how do we introduce that great quality song to someone in order to make them realize it's going to be valuable to them? You know, there's a difference between just letting a song out there and, and actually getting it into the right ears and into the hands and into somebody who's going to react to it. And I think that this is a lot of what we're missing. So all these parts that I'm going to give you, there's five parts in this little talk here before we get to income. So these five parts are going to help you start to understand and start to be able to define your value, your credibility, and your brand, and be able to put it all together so you'll start getting a better reaction to everything you do from this point on. And it is an act, it's kind of an abstract concept, but I think once you get it in your head, it will really be rooted there. So all popular content, everything popular, everything that we love, that we respond to, that we're emotional about, all popular content has value to someone. It's not going to have value to everyone at that moment, but it's going to have value to someone, right? So think of an artist that you are crazy about. And every time you see their videos, you see their posts, you, you wait for, you anticipate, right? Or any, any live streamer or um, anyone, any influencer that you anticipate seeing, you anticipate seeing them because they bring you a certain value, a certain credibility that you know you can count on from them and that you look for and that you will like, oh yeah, oh, there's another one. Okay, I'm so excited. Let me go watch this. Let me go do this. You know what I mean? And sometimes you even get so addicted to it and so emotionally captured by that person and their personality and their charisma that you actually want to wear them on a t-shirt. You want to wear their stuff. You want to buy their merchandise. You want to invest your money and bring them in more further into your life. And it could be, you want to go to their concerts. You want to see their live streams. You want to, you just want to get more, right? You want their big packages when they release like a big full package with merchandise and all kinds of really cool stuff that you can't get anywhere else. Yes, I will totally throw down some money for that because I value this it, it is giving me this emotional turnaround that I feed off of and I feel good about having this happens with educators these days through social media educators 
are like they've never been seen before. People can run a whole business online on the internet based on education. We never had that before because we used to have to go to school to get educated and now you can see a video and get educated like you're doing here. You don't have to buy a course right now. I'm just giving this to you for free and it's, it's a value and that's why you're sitting here watching it. So you see how as a musician, you have to take what we're all able to do as professionals in the industry and figure out what it is that is going to be your appeal to an audience, who that audience is going to be, and what kind of value you're going to be able to bring to them long term. Now there's more to this. That is not it. That is like the flesh. That's like the outside layer. <laughs> That's just like the general description, right? Let's talk a little bit about character, relatability, and personality. Now, every single musician has their own thing. Every influencer has their own thing. Everybody we watch and love has their own thing. You watch Will Smith on social media, he's got his thing, right? You know what you're going to get from him. You know what you love about him. I mean, it is so cool, right? It's totally cool. And, and we like him. Do you watch The Rock? The Rock exploded. He was one of the first celebrities to attack social media and see the long-term vision of how that could build his career huge. What does he do? He goes into the Gemini live streams. He creates videos. He gets up and motivates people. He doesn't just act, although we follow his acting career, but that's not it. That's not the whole game. The whole game with The Rock is his personality, his influence, his inspiration, what he uses, his lifestyle, his children. He's got an adorable daughter that we all know really, really well because he puts her on social media, his relationships. We fall in love with the celebrity and watch his movies and want to do everything we can to be involved with them. We want to go and sign up and, and be part of it because we have been emotionally invested in the content, the content. He is not hiding a whole bunch of stuff, although there's some stuff that's private, right? But he really makes amazing content. So when we look at value and what value actually is composed up of, it's not just the music. The music has to be amazing. You have to have great skills. But aside from having your skills, you could even be moving into a better form of your music and skills. You could be maybe touching the surface of it and carrying people along with you as you try. You don't even have to be what you're going to be in 10 years on social media because people are very, very interested in other people because most people that are on social media are filling a need of connection. They want to connect. They want to be entertained. So if your personality can fill that need in some way with something, then that is what is going to help you build a brand, get people to listen to your music and get people on board with this process moving forward. Okay. I got more. I got more. That's just one little bit. That's like the second part. Now you could be a high energy entertainer. You could be a laid back entertainer. You could be an in your face, like, you know, ah, <laughs> I just got to tell you this. I got this going on right now. And you know, you could be somebody who's really opinionated, whatever it is, that's part of your charisma and your style and your personality, embrace it. Don't hide it. Don't try and be someone else because there will be like what I said before, all popular content has value to someone. Write that down. All popular content has value to someone. It doesn't mean you're going to appeal to everyone. I mean, listen, as much as you think everybody likes me, no, not everybody likes me. <laughs> there are some people that don't like what I have to say because they just don't want to, they don't want to embrace it. They don't want to embrace the truth. And I'm kind of very truthful in that way. I don't lie to people. I really tell them like it is. And although I try to be very kind and very encouraging and always have an answer to be able to move forward, I never criticize unless I have a way that you can move forward. But not everybody wants to hear that. A lot of people just think that they are it and at the top of their level and never going to improve their game. And this is it. This is going to be the one. <laughs> and they don't want to hear anything else. But it's, it's a matter of taste, isn't it? We don't all like the same movie. We don't all like the same music. So your content, if you are honest and you build it great and you do an awesome job, 
that is going to appeal to an audience. And there is a huge amount of people out there. Don't think there's not going to be an audience for you because there is. So that's out of the way. Next, let's talk about, so we've covered character, we covered personality, we covered who you're going to be, right? Just put it out there, start making some videos, get on some live streams, pay, figure out how to reflect it in your pictures and start rounding out your content around your character, not just the music, but who you are and incorporate that music and tie it into how it's going to be part of you. Okay. Here's the next. Find a way in your content to offer some kind of educational value. Now, I don't want you to be a teacher. You're not going to make yourself into something that you're not. You're a musician. But how can you bring, right? How can you bring value to that audience specifically? So I already said character. I already said personality. Some that's really a great start. That is so going to be important because that's going to be something tied into the credibility and what people think of you and what, how people react to you and how you kind of appeal to someone. Your characteristics are going to appeal to certain people and bring them back for more. But to further it, let's think about what you can offer them that is going to be like a priority to make you a priority. Are you going to fill an emotional need? And what is that need? Are you going to, are you going to educate people? Are you going to take them on a journey? Like, are you learning to, are you learning to produce music in a certain way? Are you changing up the style of music that you're doing? Are you making a new album? Are you making a new single? Are you about to film a music video? How are you going about that? And what process are, is that, is that happening? What, how is that struggle? going to map out for you? Can you do a, a blog diary on it? Can you take some pictures and put up a blog every week about your journey moving forward on this, like the struggle? So just like you're writing to a diary, but you're writing to your newsletter and your people, can you just do it in a live stream? And then can you embed that video on YouTube and put it in your newsletter and put it on your website as a track record of what it took to get this here? Now this educational value is considered educational. You might not think it is, but even like I am going to use these headphones and this microphone and I love it because, you know, you're not selling products necessarily, but you're involving people in your process and it's something to talk about that might be funny, might offer some tips or some struggle stories or might even define your music you know, in a much, much better way and a more enlightening way. Now we see this, actually, we see this a lot in mainstream artists, Lady Gaga. We saw, um, we saw Katy Perry, Katy Perry streamed for one week straight, 24 hours a day. And I think it was a week. I, it could have been more, but before she released her album, she streamed every single day. Like they even watched her sleep on a stream. You don't have to go that far, but it, the, the point is she expressed the struggles, the exhaustion. She expressed the work, how hard she worked. She really painted a picture and in everybody's mind, they came back to that stream every day to check on her and see how she was doing. She commanded an audience like nothing else on that launch of that album. So you got to say value, education right? You don't think it's an education, but it is. It's feeding us something that we want to know. And that's all really education is today. Today, it's about making content that gives people something that they're inquisitive about or interested in. And that's considered education. All right, making sense, right? Am I tying it in? Am I making sense so far? I hope I am. If not, leave me a question because I really want to address it. All right. So now where do you put this value, this education? YouTube, very searchable, searchable long-term. Most YouTube videos do not do well the minute they're launched unless they already have an audience. Most YouTube, YouTube videos can really take off about four months down the road and serve as inventory so that that next video, if it does take off in the first little while or whenever, it leads them to the next video and the next video and becomes a bin watching kind of service. And if you have consistency and you've built up a lot of videos over time, people will not only follow that channel 
and follow you, but they'll get emotionally invested in you. How often have you ever just found out about somebody from something you were searching and then all of a sudden, you end up watching more than one video. Like me, maybe you've never met me before and this video makes so much sense. You're like, wow, I wonder what she thinks about Instagram. I'll go watch that video. What does she think about Twitter? I'll go watch that video. You know what I mean? What does she do? I'll go check her out on Instagram. And it goes on from there. So one searchable piece of content can really bring in an, an audience and actually serve you 24 hours 24 seven. This could be in a music video. This could be a behind the scenes video. All of this works together, but you have to make sure you're not just releasing the music official video because the music official video is good and great. But if you have no audience invested in you, no audience to talk to, no audience interested in it, then you're going to need us a lot. <laughs> you're going to need my team to do all the work for you because you have done nothing leading up to that time. I've even had musicians say, Hey guys, this is the last post you're going to see from me as I rebuild my studio. And I said to him, now why on earth would you leave social media and desert any, any idea of using open boxes, how you're building your studio, what you're going to make with the studio, how you're going to use the equipment. Why would you not use that as a way to get people wrapped around the new music coming out? I would think that if I open this and, and you guys saw me, wow, I just got this. And I just got this last Christmas, right? From my, my father bought it for me. So when I open my Roland and I'm about to use it, people were like, did you ever use it? Did you make something? What did you make? I mean, like literally, this is how it goes. This is ultimate timeline content, right? You're taking notes. All right. I like to see that. I like to see that a lot. Awesome. Um, let me see. Let me stop and answer some questions. Makes 100% 100, 100 making sense. Awesome. Understanding YouTube and how to use it while exercising patience is a huge question mark for me. Okay. So let me stop there really quick. And this is, this is a great question, actually. Um, so like this channel, I haven't used this channel very often, yet some older videos keep the channel running entirely. Like they get hundreds of streams every single day and it's not the new videos, right? And the longer I don't post a video, the least likely I am to get people when I first post a video because it's just an old following and maybe they're not getting notifications. They're not looking for me anymore. Maybe the algorithm says, well, she hasn't launched a video in a long time. So we're not even going to bother wasting money on our email and, you know, send, sending your videos out. We're going to wait till she starts bringing in people to this social media platform before we rank her video, before we do this. So there's a, there's a time period on YouTube where you really have to invest your time and show and prove to this algorithm that you're here long-term, that you're here to stay. You know what I mean? Yes, you cannot just expect the video to go off. Now, what we do behind the scenes at AVA Live Radio with our press team is we have a newsletter that is open to uh, wanting to know about new music videos. So we can pull at, in blocks of 5,000, uh, 5,000, newsletters like so we send one newsletter out to 5,000 people and then the next week we send another newsletter out to another 5,000 people so we do it in blocks of 5,000 and we see anywhere depending on uh, what the video is about and who it lands on and if they're interested and timing and all that depending on in that first 24 hours we'll see a percentage will open the video a percentage will stream the video some will go into that video and share that video you know so you and it goes on from there even two weeks three weeks after we send that newsletter out we see the video still gaining traction very slowly so it depends it really depends on how hard you want to work. I mean, in the beginning, you might need to use AVA Live Radio as a press team in order to get people to see your videos. Otherwise, you're going to launch them on YouTube with nobody looking at them because you have no following, you haven't been here long, and you're just going to need that help. You know, so I encourage you guys to do that. There's actually a link right here, avaliveradio.info forward slash airplay, where you can submit a video and just ask us, you know, a question about if we can help you. Now, so YouTube has this algorithm, you have to employ it. You have to make sure that like this video I'm putting out right now, it says the real reason some musicians get 10,000s of views and super fans. 
Okay, so obviously you guys that are here with me right now are on my network and you'll slowly roll in to see this video as I finish my live stream, it converts to a video, we send it out to the newsletter, we let people know out on social media, slowly you guys will roll in and watch the video. That will tell the algorithm that the video is worth watching and could be a credible video on this topic. So the tags in the video will also be on this topic. The description in the video will also be on this topic. So it's going to be working in alignment, including what I'm saying right now, the real reason some musicians get tens of thousands of views as super fans off their video. Even the audio is going to state that this video is about that. So when you do like a blog style video or you do a behind the scenes video, you wanna make sure that you're mindful of what people might be searching out there aside from just your immediate audience and why you could make the title interesting enough as long as you make sure that you back it up with good quality content. Because if people are jumping off your video after like 30 seconds, then obviously it's not gonna go anywhere. You want people to watch that video all the way through. All right, so like there's a certain, you know, line to this. Now, the reason why music videos have such a hard time is because one, nobody's searching for you yet. Two, you don't have a credible audience to deliver them to, which is why we use AVA Live Radio because we have newsletters of people that want to see new videos. So bam. And we can put them, feature them in blogs. We can put them in front of people. We can put them on social media. We have a, a network of pages and stuff that is already looking for new music. So it makes sense to put the video there. You, on the other hand, you need to work up to it. You need to document the experience and create a YouTube channel that's much like your social media page would be. So say you were going to post something on Instagram every day leading up to the video. So behind the scenes, searching uh, you know, what you're gonna wear, maybe talking about all kinds of things like who's gonna help you with the video, introducing the people in the video, talking about the music, all that stuff. Say you did that and you documented that process on Instagram, you would document it on YouTube the same way, except through video. So it could literally just be you and your cell phone in landscape mode. You know, you could even do live streams on YouTube if you're, if you're able to do that through your regular uh, computer. Or if you have a certain amount of followers, you'll be able to live stream from your phone, which is really helpful to make those videos, you know, because you can live stream and talk and address questions. Another good thing to do on your channel is address questions, blogs, anything that's Google searchable is going to feed you better long term, you know, until you get an audience. At the time you get an audience, you don't have to think so much about Google search unless you want to keep bringing in new people to those videos. But I still would always think about it. And just be relatable, be a character, be, show your character and your personality in everything you do. Now let's look at some of your questions too before I move on. Are there only four online. I'm having trouble with views. Are there only four online? I'm having trouble with views. Okay. Does that mean for social media uh, pages, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Some people are using Twitch. Some people are using, um, what's the other one? Snapchat. Some people are on TikTok. So there's a lot of social media pages. You just have to kind of choose where your audience might be and where you like to create content like some people just love creating content on TikTok, and right now TikTok's really easy to get views if you if you're there often you want to launch like two three videos a day and have a style you know what i mean and then people will will start following you and you'll be able to build an audience there same thing on instagram instagram use stories a lot more than you use the front face put like the the video like a clip from the video addressing clips videos work great on instagram like if you can get on instagram and you could go into stories and you can make a video talking to your audience and then save it to your phone, put it on the front face of Instagram, you'll get way more views on that than you will just putting a picture up. So you might even want to like have a video, a picture, a video, a picture, and roll out your front, your front page like that with maybe one post a day and then use stories all day long to check in with people and create interesting stories, you know, whatever you're doing, like, 
actually, you know, clips of stuff being made. I mean, show them the inside. You know what I mean? You're having trouble getting views. Views take time. And like I said, you have to work the algorithms and you have to figure out what platform you're going to be on and appeal, learn the platform really well and appeal to the platform. I have other videos that teach you how to learn these platforms really, really well. And like I said, if you have a specific platform, leave it in the comments so that I'll make another video on currently how to do better on that platform, you know? So what you're saying, let me pop up another one for you guys. So what you're saying is it's kind of like putting money into the bank routinely long term with videos. Yes, video is a long term investment no matter where you put it. Like my videos on uh, Facebook, actually, I can reshare those videos. So that video once made can be something I can reshare. If it's even a video of a song that I did, I can reshare that video often. Like I can literally take the embed code and put it in a website. I can take the video itself and I can repost it from time to time. I can pin it in different places. I can put it in group pages. You don't have to just have the video disappear. You can even do playlists on Facebook. Same thing with Twitter. Twitter, you can save the tweet link. You can save it in notes and then you can go back to the video and repost those tweets so that they can continue to build up. You can also do this on Instagram now. Um, a lot of the video, if you notice, you can pull up Instagram on your computer and you can actually get a, a, do a, a name. So it has a browser name. So there's an address to the post. So now you can save those posts and you can post them out on other social media pages. <laughs> you can share them everywhere. You can direct, you can direct traffic basically to all these things. And I still say the best long term and always has been is YouTube. So if you are going to build a following, you definitely want to focus as much as possible on YouTube because you'll be surprised. You put in, put in five months of work on YouTube. Your videos will not only get better, you'll improve as a creator. You'll start challenging yourself. You'll dig further into the YouTube community. You'll understand how things work because you can look it all up, you know, and, and just Google search it all. And you will build an audience here. You will build an audience here, especially if you offer value and you start to document the process. You've got to get involved in it. Use it as your main social media page if that's what it takes. But I really do believe that this is a great place. And we're going to talk about income at the end of this video. Um, so let's see. Let's get another one from you guys. So what I'm experiencing is the disconnect wherein streams aren't converting or generating followers on my platforms. Is that because I don't have great content to supplement the music? Okay, so by streams, I'm thinking, is it video streams or is it Spotify streams? I, if it were Spotify streams, which most of you guys are having trouble with, right? So say, let's see, say you say you're working with AVA Live Radio and we are putting your music on the radio broadcast and that is driving traffic to your Spotify streams, which is what's happening with a lot of you guys. You're reaching your milestones because we're taking your Spotify and we're marketing it on social media. We're putting it in the newsletter. We're adding it to the website. We're pushing people to the website so that they can play it right there on the website and leave like comments and stuff. So what, what would happen is very rarely does someone click over to Spotify and actually click follow. And the reason I think this is, is because simply a lot of people use Tidal, they use SoundCloud, they use Apple, you know what I mean? They use so many different platforms that they listen to music, but they're not necessarily going to be a lifelong follower just yet. I find that people need to experience you seven, eight, nine times before they buy in. They might love a song and listen to it, and say, oh yeah, that's great. I love that song. Perfect. It's not in their mind though to follow the artist. And it's amazing how that happens. This is where purpose and value videos really come in. Because if somebody saw your video on YouTube and then they were led to see another video because you, you have a banner up that says, watch this next, right? 
and they can click through, or maybe they got in through your playlist for YouTube, all these different little tactics, then they'd be more likely to binge watch things. And if you have videos in there where your personality starts to show, bam, now you've just become something more. And this is what I'm talking about. That quality of content, that engagement, that, that personability needs to come through. You have to offer more value than just the music and the music is fabulous and so valuable, but honestly, people want to know more. Yeah, so purpose. Um, music, Spotify streams is what you're saying. Okay, so on Spotify, it's a social media page. Not everybody is going to want to, not everybody collects followers, believe it or not. We think as musicians, wow, I gotta get followers there. But honestly, I follow all the musicians that I work with and I very rarely get a notification from Spotify that they've launched a new song. If it shows up at all, it'll be tied on a multiple release newsletter. Like maybe it'll come out on Friday and perhaps only music launching on a certain day is getting notified to the customers. Cause I follow everybody yet I do not get, like Ryan, I did not get a notification from Spotify that you launched a new song. But yet the other day I got a notification about Taylor Swift's new song. So like, hmm, it's kind of like not, it's a social media page. It's not something that I believe you should focus on followers there. I would rather have people focus on followers on their newsletter. Because if you're gonna work that hard to get an audience to the point where they're going to follow you somewhere, wouldn't it be better to actually be in control of whether or not you can access them than wait for another social media page to maybe or maybe not notify them of a new song? You know what I mean? So th this is something that is, uh, I, I always wonder about. Now, going back to credibility, yes, you have to have a lot of streams. You do because people want to see the people are playing the music and it's a visual thing. They are able to see how many streams, how many times a certain song was streamed. So when you're introducing a single to the Spotify algorithm and you're trying to get on one of their playlists or you're applying somewhere and you're saying this song is really taken off, that's the only measurability. That's the only reference of measurability. It would be a YouTube view or a streaming count, which could be on Reverb Nation. It, although it doesn't really show that much on Reverb Nation, I would say on Spotify primarily, and then SoundCloud could happen too. Although there's so much controversy around SoundCloud, I don't know that I would bother there. I think I would still focus at this point on Spotify and YouTube views. Two, two things, Spotify and YouTube views. Build your brand through YouTube content, take that content, put it out there in different ways around Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, draw everybody back to YouTube, you know, try and build up that channel so that people, you know, get that and always find a way to add value to the audience by you get more in the newsletter, you know? So you have to think, you have to think further. So you would want to draw, you would want to draw this like, the center is going to be your website, right? and your website slash newsletter. So from your website, this is where everything else is going to lead into. You, you basically want a branded piece of content. You want this, you want this corner of your own universe. And on this should be, you can embed the YouTube video. So like for instance, if you go to avaliveradio.info right now, everything we got, everything important, is on that front page. So you can see the latest video, you can see the latest music stream on YouTube, you see the latest music stream linked to the Twitter stream, you can see where to hear the radio station and where, like all the different places to hear, the most popular places to hear. You can even see the most popular featured blog posts and who's coming on the show. All of that is happening on that main page and that page gets a lot of traffic. So your website, right? It's not serving you well. You don't look professional if your websites aren't great. And if your website doesn't include the social pages of choice for any value person, maybe some people are on Instagram and not on Twitter, not on Facebook. So you have to have them all represented there and, ha and upkeep a presence, which isn't really hard. Because if you're creating content for YouTube, you're gonna have two things. You're gonna have video and you're gonna have images. And if you use the video and the images and you, you pull clips from them, and use them in different ways and scatter them out around the other social media pages, you're good. Everything is gonna lead back to your website 
which is where your latest video is, which is where your newsletter is, and you can serve that up to an audience. And as you go along, you'll collect people. Now, the better the content and the more fun the content and the more interactive the content is, the more people you're gonna get. It's just as easy as that, really. The, the, you put all of your cookies into that content. And then when, well, Ryan's using AVA Live Radio and our press team to try and like, you know, have access to more people, which is, we work with record labels, we work with management team for that reason, because we know how to access that. We know how to take great content and get it out there in front of a lot of people. I mean, on Twitter alone, we have two point something million impressions we make every four or five days. That means every piece of content, even older pieces of content, they're still recycling. So it's not just the 60, 70, 80 pieces of new content that goes on the pages every day. It's the, uh, the extension pages that are moving it along. It's the fans that are moving it along. It just keeps going. So say, say I share to my page and my page gives it another 56,000 impressions and then s several people on my page share it then it goes out like a spider web so literally on twitter you've got one tweet every tweet that can keep doing this i mean it's crazy you have no idea one tweet one tweet goes out to maybe a couple people, then it goes out to another base and then they share it and then that could, keeps going. And then it, you see what I mean? So over time, one tweet can freaking grow huge. <laughs> so that's why, uh, you know, our Twitter is generating two, three million impressions in a couple of days because we put out like 60, 70 tweets. Enough of them are valuable to a lot of people. So whether the artist themselves finds them valuable or the fans find them or music blogs, other radio stations support them. I mean, all kinds of people are on that Twitter. So whatever they want to en engage with, they take it and they move it forward and it just keeps going from there. So that can happen on Facebook as well. That can happen on Instagram in a limited way because Instagram, you really want to come up with content that makes people say, I want to introduce this to someone else. And you want to encourage people to tag other people in your Instagram posts. Otherwise, use stories a lot because stories are going to reach a lot larger audience. And you can even use hashtags and stories in fun ways. And that will hopefully get your your story up to the front. So there's all these little things. So but you use your platforms well, you learn how to use your platforms well, and you know, you invest your time in creating content for the platforms that manage that matter the most. All right, so I, I got you. <laughs> it's the jammy. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm digging into my webpage today. Awesome. All right, good. Okay, so to recap first, and I'm gonna go a little further here because we have three more points. Um, the value, all popular content is what is valuable to someone just got to figure out that audience and you will connect and the more content you make, the better you make it, the more interesting it is, the more valuable it is, you know, emotionally tied to it is more of your character and personality coming out that that is going to connect with more people and it's going to find your audience. Try and put it on social media pages in various places where you like to be that also that will serve you. So use YouTube a lot because it's searchable, it's public, it's embeddable. It really, you know, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy to, it's easy to use. Um, educational value, blogs, Google search specific stuff, YouTube, social media specific content. So tailor the content. Like I said, I gave you a great plan. Make stuff with YouTube in mind and then take it and disperse it. You don't have to put the whole thing, just lead them back. You know what I mean? And find ways to make it clickable. Like, yes, you really want to see this video because always answer that question. Um, so next, relatability is a sticky, sticky topic because somebody who is relatable to one person, it's kind of like art. <laughs> you know, you some of you are going to love my art. Some of you, eh, it's not so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Relatable is there's an audience for everything. Yes. Yes. Seriously. Have you ever said, I don't know why people watch this. I don't know why people like that movie. I don't like it. I don't know why people listen to this, this person's music. Cause I don't like it. I don't know why, right? That's relatability. It's going to have an audience. Even, even if it's bad, it's going to have an audience because somebody is going to love it. 
you know, even if you consider it bad. So not necessarily is relatability going to be defined in one specific way because it really, it, it depends on the interest of the person that's seeing it, the way that you present it, and the personality of the person giving it. You know what I mean? Are they relatable? Do, does the value, that does the, the, the thing that they're trying to express, does that come across in the right way for that specific audience? And you will find that out just by doing more content. It's not something you can pre-plan pre for. You will just come into your own as you get more comfortable. So surely at first, a lot of the videos you won't feel are good, but I have released videos, like I have live streams that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take that down. And then all of a sudden people are like, commenting like crazy on the video. And I personally didn't think it was one of my best videos, but those seem to be the ones where people were like, they were most relatable or they learned the most from. And I thought, well, I thought it took me too long to explain that, but no, nope, those are the ones that they liked the best. So you never can tell, you just have to make them, put them out there, have confidence and just say, ah, it's out there. Okay, I've done my best, move on. Let's make something else. Relatability. <laughs> relatability mine is like this guy is a jerk <laughs> well there's an audience for that <laughs> hey listen telling your truth yeah that's gonna be what i feel about people who tell their truth is they tend to be the people that spring forward quicker i feel like the people that walk on eggshells all the time are less relatable than the people who just lay it out there like it is. But with that being said, you don't have to go overboard. You just have to be yourself. So don't try and be overly yourself. Pull it into yourself, right? So you don't have to like exaggerate. In other words, there are some people that over exaggerate, but then they get in this trap where they're talking so fast and they, you know, it just becomes something that they have to keep up with and it's exhausting. So that's why you just want to be yourself from the beginning and just have that nice, even pace and that, you know, that recognizable quality that's going to be you from this point, moving forward, moving on. Right. Um, okay. So what's next here? The area of the content that you're going to produce, you want to look at who's producing and what they're producing. You wanna dig deep and look at maybe their most popular videos and what it is that they did that added even more value to the audience, got a lot of interaction going, got a lot of credibility and, and was really well received. And there's usually something with every artist that has done really, really well where they've told their story multiple times, where they have sat down and done Q and A's. And those Q and A's, don't discount those. Those Q and A's might not be for new people, but man, once people get to know you, they are gonna dig deep into those Q and A's and they're gonna have more questions for you. So that is a really, really big thing. Truth is so important to me, even when it stings. Yeah, I agree. Without truth, you never can accomplish. I mean, the best thing that anybody can do is tell you the truth because you could go around in circles forever. And if people just like coddle you to death, you're never really going to, to be the person that you could have been. You need that person challenging you and it just makes you better. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that you have to feel rudeness. It doesn't mean you have to be rude or you can be rude. You should never, never have an attitude. You should always lose your ego. You should just, just be truthful. But always, I find my rule of thumb is if I'm going to be truthful to somebody and, and have to tell them bad news, I never tell them bad news unless I have a way to offer them, you know, a strategy to move forward. I feel like my opinion's only valuable to someone if I have a, a, a remedy for it. And I think that that's, I, I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like that's anybody who is gonna comment on anybody's stuff, I feel like they should always have a remedy or a, a something to offer. Otherwise, you know, that's not fair. It's not fair. And it's not really going to be fair to the person receiving it. You know what I mean? They make pills for rudeness. <laughs> what are those pills called? <laughs> Rude be gone. <laughs> they make pills for rudeness. Hey there, Peter, what's up? How are you? I'm totally interested in the Q&A prospects. Yes, I like Q&As. I mean, Q&As will, over time, they, they really will be easy for you because 
as you gain people somewhere in your travels on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, personal messaging, all that, people will answer questions. So save them up, put them in your phone, and then get on once a week and do a Q&A video. And it's really just like, okay, I got some Q&As in my phone. Let's get to it. You know, let's get, let's, let's get on this. And just, it could be anything like where you're from, how you got started. What, what is this that you use? Can you explain that? Um, what was the meaning behind this? Little shallow questions even. Doesn't matter. Q&A. Very relatable. It's a way to get your personality out there and have a conversation. It's a great conversation starter for live streams. It really will be your best friend for live streams moving forward because you'll always have something to talk about and questions get more questions. You know what I mean? But stick with it. It's not going to, it might not happen like the first week. It might not happen the first month for you. You have to give people time. Like not everybody's going to see this video in the next 24 hours. I'm thinking this video is going to serve people the best six months from now. So <laughs> I'm in it for the win. <laughs> I'm in it for the long term. You know what I mean? Okay, so next. Um, all right, so now we talked about relatability. Did I cover that well enough for you? You take your interests, take your personality, roll them in together, find a way to add value to the audience in the area that that content serves. Okay, so obviously if I was a musician and I was making a new song, I might do a YouTube video as I was creating the new song. And it could just be a five, 10 minute video on, you know, like, you know, this and what this has to offer and what I really like, wow, I really, I wanted to play this chord for you guys because it's really good. And I just, I'm getting so much inspiration right now. Let's talk about it. Simple, right? really really simple but yet it makes a good video because it's like you at the beginning of a song and your setup and what you're using and how you just wow you feel like you just got inspired for everything moving forward for an entire song that you're going to invest your time and, and energy and money into right from this instrument right now this is the point of which it all started you need to document that as simple as it seems and as stupid as it seems you need to document it. So maybe just have a stand there, stick your phone on it, grab some video, do a little video diary for five minutes, 10 minutes and saved, post it up on YouTube. At, in the beginning, it's just that simple. It doesn't have to be, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be anything further than that. Okay. I'm almost at the end. Woo. Guys got me going here. <coughs> Name recognition. It's not going to come right away. But the reason why we have a nice website <laughs> is because you like an anatomy of a song video. Yes, exactly, exactly. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be mapped out over a lot of videos. In fact, I think it's easier to do it in small bites in the beginning than to try and put a whole big edited video together. I wouldn't go crazy. I would do it really simply, almost like a live stream and even live stream on Facebook to grab the video from there and then post it to YouTube or live stream directly on YouTube. You know, like you can literally open your phone. You can create the video in YouTube. Um, you might not be able to live stream until you get a certain amount of followers, but at first you just record the video right there and then just hit send. And then you go on there and title and tag it and add a, add a nice thumbnail, you know, the whole thing. So that's really easy. Super indie stars get super fans to listen to their music and AVA Live Radio make it possible on their way. Oh, thank you. We try. We're working hard. <laughs> We're working really hard to get as many eyes and ears on you guys as we possibly can every single day. But it's fun, you know? We like our job, so it's good. Thank you. Um, okay, last, that name recognition. So brand. So what I mean by brand at this point in time is for long-term branding, it's going to be when you see my face on social media, what do you think? You know, do you watch the videos that I put out because my face is there? You know, like, do you show up for the live streams and watch the live streams of me reviewing music because you're used to seeing something from me now? Do, when I show up, if I show up, can you count on me delivering something that is going to be worth your time? That's branding. It's, it's about how your face and your images and what it is that you deliver, your content, all speak to that audience when you're not in the room, when you are in the room and when you have something important to say. So obviously if I start switching what I deliver to you guys and I start delivering, you know, crappy stuff, 
you're gonna the brand is gonna liquidate really fast as quickly as it, it built you might hang in there for a little while and say oh man i know she's gonna turn it around <laughs> i know she's gonna get better but ultimately if i don't deliver and keep delivering you know i can take the brand down so the brand is my face it's personal it's it's me it's you knowing me it's you knowing my dog it's you knowing you know um, what's been my struggles and and me being really honest about it on instagram posts or on facebook posts and documenting the process and enjoying the fact that you guys are there for the support i give you give back you know so like it, that exchange is all part of the brand. It's what we come to know about the person and their personality and the kind of things they create and their talent and their skills. And over time, that brand is a personal identity. So it's really difficult to build a brand around something other than a product. But if you look at yourself like you're a product, but you're a personal product, right? Then you're gonna be wanting to stay on brand and wanting to keep deliver that you know to keep delivering the same quality content and the same type of things to the audience that you serve because otherwise you disappoint them and they will if they if they really like your stuff they'll tell you they'll tell you what they like and what they don't like i have released songs before where people are like yeah you still got it i was live streaming on uh instagram the other day and i got messages like wow after all this time you can still sing man you know like you should do it more and then i've gotten uh messages before where i was singing as a musician and people were like that song is not for you <laughs> i did not like that song at all <laughs> you just didn't get it you know what i mean and that's okay because honestly the people who have been around you the longest they know you the best and they can give you a perspective a real good perspective and if you're not afraid to hear it and and use it to make things better and make the experience better for them which ultimately you're here to serve them they're not here to serve you you are here to serve them then um yeah why not use that information and it's wonderful if people give it to you like when we live stream music and why i've been live streaming music i like the fact that you guys are there w during that period of time i do it anyway and i found that a lot of the new artists are getting a little value um, in those live streams, you know, pre-launch that they wouldn't get any other time. And if I can even just like what that Twitter stream, Twitter now, those streams cumulatively are well over 10,000 views, maybe into 25, 30,000 views in two weeks. So that's 30,000 people that I didn't get the music in front of if I wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? There's some videos on this channel where we live streamed me listening to some music and they're each at 3,000 views, 4,000 views, 5,000 views, some at 10,000 views. That's views that they wouldn't have gotten if I wouldn't have streamed that. And if I would have just put it on the radio, sure, it's getting all those streams on a built radio station that has 15 different channels and has an established audience, but why not get this too? You know, and this is what you guys need to think of in terms of value and where the images are going and what the images are saying to the audience and how it, it all, you know, builds up. Let me take some of your questions and make sure here that I'm not missing anything. I need help with brand identity. I know I have a brand, but I've hit a wall. So make it more personal. Other perspective is important. Okay, so when you feel like you've hit a wall with brand identity, no brand is a brand. Everything you do is your brand identity. Um, specifically with you, Ryan, your music is part of your brand identity because it's very specific, right? And it, it is, it's all, it's not similar, but it's in a vein, a real specific vein, and it is already tailoring and appealing to a specific audience. So you need to keep going with what you've already been doing. Keep going with the style of your images, the filters on your images, the way you make your images look, even the fact that they, they all kind of have like a certain color palette to them, right? You keep going with that because you're doing the right thing. You just, the, the only problem with, with your specific routine is that you do it for a little while and then you cut out. You, you stop too early. You're one, you're one of the stop too early people, <laughs> you know? So like if you would continue on, like you were doing videos in the studio, uh, I think last year, and you didn't continue with that, right? You built your studio, you were really excited about it, you were making music, you were starting to go, but because not a lot of people were showing up, you didn't appreciate the people who did show up, and so you stopped doing it. Where you could have taken that 
and ran with it and kept going and you'd had a built by now. So like you can't cut out even if it's hard, you know, you can't cut out. And this is for many of you. I, I would say 99% of you, this appeals to you. You can't cut out because it's hard. I am dog tired at the end of my day. This video right here, right now, I don't get paid for this. This is not part of my wheelhouse as far as like, this is not part of my income. It's not part of my career. It's not, not even necessary for me to do it, but I do it because it offers so much value to the audience and the people that I feel need it. It's important for me to serve this. So I'm consistently releasing these videos, even though I don't get paid for them. And I don't even feel like this is exactly what I am, I'm supposed to be doing. It's not my job. Like there are people on YouTube that do nothing but these videos. They do nothing but these how to videos. They build a course. They try to just do that. You know, they're just launching a course in training and they probably have never even done it themselves. They're just, they just learned it. And so therefore they're serving it up. Um, but yet I keep going as tired as I am. You know, I literally sometimes when these streams happen, I am so exhausted that sometimes I can't even think, but yet I know it's important to do it and I keep doing it. Sometimes when I post or I take pictures or I'm working with a brand, I do not feel like doing it. I'm exhausted. Still do it. Still do it because the audience that you're serving needs to build up over time and they need to feel that they can trust you consistently. Otherwise, if you just show up and then you disappear, you've lost everything. You've lost all the momentum and you've basically told that audience that thanks for showing up, but you were not important enough to me to keep showing up for. Remember, you're here to serve others. And when you stop serving others, you're telling them indirectly, they're not important to you. No explanation. So as I always say, if I'm going to serve it up hard, I'm going to give you the value at the end, right? Be consistent. This is the biggest, biggest problem with everybody who does not make it. It's not the quality of music. Your music is great quality. It's not your personality. Your personality is hysterical. It's great. You know, even when you're harsh, <laughs> it's great. You have a personality. You have something people would like to hear from, but you don't show up for them enough. Consistency. That will serve you. You put five months into this and you be consistent with it. I mean, you could ask me questions all the time. I'm working behind the scenes with you all the time. You just need to not give up. You need to not get fed up and say, oh, I got to go back to work. That's it. There's got to be something you could do in the middle. You don't have to be there every day. Maybe you could do it once a week. Maybe you could do it once every two weeks, but you have to be consistent with whatever you do. Okay. Name recognition, branding, image, colors, text, all that goes into it. Now, so we're not going to like do a branding video right now, right? But just think of your brand and every image and everything you put out has to do with what people will recognize or not recognize. The number one thing I'm going to say about branding is every social media page should have the same thumbnail and don't change it that often <laughs> because I can't tell you enough how many times I have tried to tag people, but literally they change their image so much. I can't find them. I can't recognize them and it's not convenient. So maybe I'm on the go. Maybe I don't have the ability to switch screens, but man, maybe I, I thought of something great or I saw something great. And I'm like, man, I could share their post right now. And I'm just going to share it, but I can't tag them because I can't find them. Right? So maybe I've just seen something from you or I just watch or I listen to you on Spotify and I'm like, oh, I'm playing you right now. Let me go tag them. I can't find them. They're not on Twitter. They're not on Facebook. They're not on Instagram. I don't recognize their name. Their picture's not there. Branding. Huge. Because if I can't find you and I've got a purpose to find you, then nobody can find you because a, a fan's not going to work that hard. And this is where a website really serves. Because if people know your name and you have your website, that's your name and everything's right there on the front page and accessible, man, you just made everything so much easier, especially your latest video. If they could sign up for your newsletter and you will automatically deliver it to them, man, you just made it so much easier for people to connect, mem mem remember you, get your stuff when you have it, all that. So what am I up to? Man, I am past an hour on this video. All right. So, uh, branding, 
all has to do with advertising, branching out, uh, use AVA Live Radio in your branding because obviously if you have no reach, you have no audience, we can help you with that. We can pull in, we can get your information and yourself is in front of it. But as far as expectations with branding, remember branding is only as good as the content you put out with it and like how consistent you are about releasing it. So the average person needs to see an artist or a new person seven, eight, nine times before they react to it. So don't be surprised if one post doesn't serve you like you think you need to because you have algorithm issues at this point when you're new and you have image issues at this point. So one thing in a stream of 1500 posts, it's got to stand out and it's got to stand out consistently, not by being the same thing, but by being consistently delivering. So say I was a musician, say I started to live stream Facebook. Let's think about Facebook algorithm. Uh, you saw one live stream from me and you're like, oh, well, that was so much fun. I love her music. I'm going to follow her. But then I never show up again, which I've done. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. As far as I'm concerned, they'll go on to the next person. So say I stream every single night for a month. Wow. A month? A month of me every night in your newsfeed serving up a song, even if it's one song. I've just created something. I've just created a pattern, a habit with that audience. And as more people follow, they start to say, she's going to be on that live stream tonight. I'm going to go see if she's live streaming tonight. And then if, if I take it a step further, which is really difficult for me and saying, I'm going to show up at this live stream at this time every single night, which is near impossible for me with my work schedule now. But if I were, I would grow that much faster as a musician, literally, because people would be like starting right now. Justin Trudeau is on TV every day at 10, I think it's 10 o'clock Eastern time, every day. If he shows up late, we sit and wait for him. My mother says to me the other day, it's almost 10 o'clock, let's turn on the TV. And I'm like, what do you wanna watch? And she's like, Trudeau's gonna be on doing his press conference. He's gonna talk to the, talk to the people. I'm like, that's branding right there. Is that amazing to me? Is that amazing? So she, has got, he's trained her over the course of a few weeks that at a certain time every day, he's going to show up. And even if he's late, she'll sit there and patiently wait. And she remembers that he's going to show up and she shows up for him. So it's like a television show. Basically your social media feeds become a television show. Your YouTube channel becomes a television show. You, if you don't show up, people don't show up for you. They go on to someone else. If you do show up, and you show up consistently, they'll keep watching you. And it took two, I asked her, I said, how many weeks did it take for you to learn his name and figure out that he was on every single day at a certain time? She's like, probably about two weeks, probably about two weeks. And I'm thinking, see, put in two weeks, put in a month, appreciate every single viewer because every single viewer means you're doing something right. If somebody is there giving you their time, like you guys are here with me, God bless you because you know what? That means that I have offered you enough value to still be here. Awesome. <laughs> Job well done. <laughs> and I'm excited because I'm literally losing my voice. Okay. I promised you at the end of this that I would tell you how to monetize uh, this. So really quickly, I wrote down I'm going to do this in five minutes or less, I promise, because it's that easy. Once you have a following and you're delivering this content consistently and you are in your zone, you are in your flow, you are not breaking it for anything. There are ways to monetize. Crowdfund, although very limited, can be very good. Crowdfunding on an album is excellent because you're not exhausting the revenue that comes in from the audience. You're not asking them for something every day. You're asking them for something to support an album, which maybe happens once a year. So you're utilizing the amount of people that you can raise the crowd in the fund based on anything from like a dollar to, you know, like upscale things. Like if maybe they want the vinyl record, maybe they want the whole package, the, maybe they want the, um, the, you know, a big package of everything. Maybe they want access to things that, you know, extra songs, special videos, whatever it is that you crowdfund is limited to the amount the audience can actually give you and how often they can give it. So you want to make sure that you don't over crowdfund. 
You know, you want to make sure you, you offer a lot of value and a way people can serve and feel value valuable by giving you money in the crowdfund, but you don't need it that often. It's pretty much going to be something that's good. Now, people do that through like $5 a month, a dollar a month, you know what I mean, to, to get new videos flowing. They also do it through crowdfunding one specific project. So say it costs you $12,000 to do a project and you describe the project, you make a video on what the project's gonna cost, the equipment, everything going into it and what they will receive. And then you have levels of donations. Perfect, crowdfunding. Um, tips on live streams. Using a paypal.me link easily adds a way for people to buy stuff from you on the live stream and buy your album, buy your t-shirts, and just tip you. Now on Twitch and some of these platforms, as you get more people, they obviously uh, can, they can give you bits, right? And tips and stuff. And there are ways that people can give you tips, but they take a percentage of it. So keep in mind that paypal.me, it just does the trick. It's really easy. They just click on the link in the description and bam, they can go and at any time after seeing that video, before they cut out, they can go and order something for you that you've shown on the video. Maybe you're wearing your shirts or that you're pitching or even trying to raise funds for the album, you know, sell t-shirts against it and sell the albums early. If they trust you and you're credible, they'll, they'll contribute. That can be a stream of revenue for you. Even just tips. I mean, literally if I were a YouTuber regularly and I were doing these kind of videos, typically you could put up a tip, a super fan tip on the live stream and that would pop up their message and the fact that they tipped you and people could give you tips for free education on YouTube. So like this can go on, that, that's easy. Merchandise streams, revenue, vinyl records, advanced copies, all that stuff is great. I love advanced copies and advanced merchandise because literally you can decide like, okay, we're gonna print only the amount of this t-shirt that places their order in this week. So place it now and get people used to doing it right then and there so that you you force the demand and you're not running all over the place trying to get better, um, trying to house inventory and trying to get better prices on printing for t-shirts and, and all that stuff. So by forcing the demand into a limited period of time, you're not only encouraging the sales, like a hit or miss thing, where like, you're either gonna get it now, baby, or you're not gonna get it, you know, cause this is easier for me. So like, that's how you can serve up merchandise and flip to new merchandise and even go back at sometimes to merchandise that's the most popular during like holidays or release times. And that will also help you gathering interest, gathering um, lots and lots of streams on things because people will invest and, and they will stream your music more likely if you have a very good professional presentation with merchandise and crowdfunding and all kinds of things tied in together. Um, and remember, as far as expectations, don't expect a brand new audience that is just getting used to you to buy right away. It doesn't mean you're failing. It just means you have to earn it. You have to earn it. So like if you, it depends, if you have a really good engaged audience and they are asking for things from you, like say you start wearing your own t-shirt and they start asking you where to get it and they like it that much. Usually if you're wearing it and you like it that much, somebody else is gonna want it. So then you can say, in a month or next month, I'll start, you know, I'll release a way for you to purchase the t-shirt or I'm starting to sell the t-shirts. We're going to deliver on this date. We have two weeks to see how many people want them and then we're going to order them and deliver them two weeks later. You know what I mean? Another merchandise stream is sponsors and affiliates. So sponsors and affiliates, like literally Amazon affiliates, all independent companies, um, usually have a way for you to get an affiliate program going with them. And that is basically tagging them up in the bottom of your YouTube videos so that people can order your stuff. So like if I were going to do a lot of music videos, then I would create an affiliate link with Amazon and find the best price on Amazon, create a gear list that goes underneath every video. And that way people can always access exactly what I'm using the make the model that whole thing and that's the value. And then you just say, you know, I will get a small percentage if you use my link to go shop for your merchandise on Amazon. And that's a way for you to have a revenue stream, that just a minimal revenue stream. As you get more people following you and as you get a larger audience, obviously the companies will offer you money to put and review their merchandise, either by paying you a flat out fee, which is usually pretty good, 
And also maybe doing a combination of do a video on it. And then also we want some social media posts. So like Instagram's really popular right now. Maybe you're on TikTok, whatever. So you, it's up to you to create the content in your own unique style that you will have developed if you were doing this over time and you were continuing to do it consistently, then you would have a style. And that company would say, we love your style. We want a video using our new product. Here's what we can pay. And you work that out. And then uh, sometimes they'll give you a promotional code and you'll make money um, either or, you know? So sometimes it'll just be on the amount of products you can sell. Sometimes it'll be a flat fee. Sometimes it'll be merchandise that you can turn around and sell later um, to make the money back. So there's a lot of different ways that you can add income through those two. So that's a big benefit to actually doing this, you know, because not only are you going to have more money through your streaming sites, but you're also going to be paid through YouTube because YouTube over a certain point will start paying you for your videos. So as you make more videos that express your personality, that people watch all the way through, that maybe you can serve up two ads in, then bam, if it's a long video and people are here the whole way, you now can make revenue from it. So tip, tip, uh, really long term down the road, if this video takes off, we could put ads in it, which YouTube's going to do anyway, and we could actually gain a, an amount of income into the station from a great video. That's how your inventory can serve you. So obviously YouTube likes it when people spend a lot of time on the videos. They like it when people comment and like and share the videos. That all helps you. So if your fans are really fans, they'll share your videos, they'll like, they'll comment. And those are the people that you want in your wheelhouse, you know, so you would want them on your newsletter. So you see how this all works together. Okay, so anything else? I mean, other revenue streams are just more of that, you know, product placement and videos, uh, using certain products, trying certain products out. That's why you want to do Q and A's. You want to do uh, documentation videos because not only are they very interesting to your fans, they excite people about the new stuff coming out, but it's a way to show your personality. And it's also something that can be monetized long-term and is highly searchable because everybody's searching for, you know, uh, what it's like to make music on this or what it's like to use that. And, you know, so that's, that's really interesting and, and going to be fun too, to watch. Super fans are the super troopers. They want everything and share everything because sharing is caring. Yes, they are. All right, guys. So if I gave you enough value in this video, man, I need a rest. My voice is exhausted now. Then please share this. Please leave me a comment below and I'll be back later with a live stream. And uh, we're also live streaming on Twitter. So yay. Don't forget if you're a musician, that link below, avaliveradio.info forward slash airplay. <sighs> See you later. And just ask me any questions below and I'll be happy to jump back on and do another one. Maybe not for an hour and 17 minutes though. This is a long video, but I am confident that I made a dent and I am confident that I taught you all how to get this to happen. <laughs>